Hello. So in this session, we will continue learning about the analysis of tension members. And we will learn about one more possible failure limit states. So we have learned already two. One is yielding of the gross section and the other is rupture at the net section. So there is one more limit state of failure which can become very important in certain cases. And this one is called the block shear failure. So we will watch a small video to see how block shear failure can happen. Right. So typically this is how members are connected to a gusset plate and when you apply a force, it can fail in that manner. Right. So an entire section can remain with the bolts and the other entire section can actually just move out. Okay. So in this, if you look at what's happening is that there is one plane which is in shear. Okay. And there is one plane which is in tension. So this is basically a combined type of failure mode where uh, you know certain portion of the member is failing in shear and certain portion of the member is failing in tension direct tension okay so this portion of the member which can fail in direct tension that will have to be considered from that perspective and the other portion which can which usually fails in direct shear has to be considered from that perspective okay so for this failure mode to happen there are two possibilities and let's consider the sequence of events in uh, one of them right so if the shear plane is large and the tension plane is small right so here uh, you see the length of the shear plane is larger than the length of the tension plane okay and the effective areas will be considered along the thickness so since thickness is constant this being the same member that is where only lengths are being considered so if we have a larger shear plane and a smaller tension plane then the sequence of events of failure will be like this first there will be yielding at the tension plane okay so at this location there will be a yielding okay once the tension plane yields uh, that portion of the member will not be able to take a lot, lot of stress a lot of further stress and it will actually reach rupture right so if you recall the stress strain graph it's like that okay so once tension plane reaches here it will very quickly reach the rupture strength and once it reaches the rupture strength uh, then the tension uh, it will not be able to take any more and then the predominant way of resisting the external load will become shear right so then this shear plane reach will reach yielding okay so first tension plane yields it reaches the rupture strength and then while it is reaching the rupture strength the shear plane will begin to yield and when the shear plane begins to yield then subsequently that will begin to reach up to the rupture strength in shear right and once the shear plane ruptures then the entire member will will fail and you know this entire thing can just go out as a block and hence the name block shear right so in this sequence of events the limit state is going to be yielding of the tension plane so yielding of the tension plane we want to prevent if you are able to prevent yielding of the tension plane then the yielding and subsequent rupture of the of the shear plane will not happen and this block shear mode can be prevented and the other is we want to prevent a rupture of the shear plane okay so even if yielding of the tension plane occurs if rupture of the shear plane does not happen even then the block shear failure mode can be avoided okay the other situation is when the shear plane is small and the tension plane is large okay so when the shear plane is small and the tension plane is large so i have left the uh, sequence of events blank so this uh, you try to think and fill by yourselves but in this case the limiting uh, state uh, will be the opposite of what was earlier right so now in this mode we want to prevent yielding of the shear plane and we, we want to prevent a rupture of the tension plane right okay so the in the indian code uh, the clause 6.4.1 gives the stipulations for the block shear failure okay and it considers the two different sequence of events that we just discussed so uh, the first one if you see so this term first term is yielding of the shear plane okay yielding of the shear plane plus rupture of the tension plane okay so this is yielding 
of the shear plane plus a rupture of tension plane. Okay, and the second one is the opposite of it. So the in the second expression, the first term is for yielding of the uh, yielding of the tension is the second term and rupture of the shear is the first term and in this you will also notice that wherever the shear strengths are being used uh, there is a term root 3 being utilized okay so basically uh, if fy is the uh, yielding of direct tension stress then in shear it is actually fy by root 3 okay and this is governed by again the one misses failure theory so in case uh, you are wondering where this root 3 is coming from, it will be a good idea to revise the one misses failure theory and from there you can actually see it right away that the yielding in shear will happen at Fy by root 3. Okay? And in this there are few areas being used. Okay? So Avg is the minimum gross area in shear. Okay? So the shear plane, whatever is the gross area of the shear plane that is being called as AVG and AVN is the minimum net area in shear. So along the same plane but instead of gross we consider net area which means gross minus the area of the holes. Similarly ATG is the gross area in tension so which is this plane's area gross area. Actually this should be here at the center line not at the end and ATN is the net area of tension failure so which means this thing minus the area of the hole. Let's look at an example. This is example 7.7 .7 of the book. So in this case there is a C section or a channel section being given which is connected on two ends by uh, two gusset plates in a way. So this is one and this is the other. Okay. So the basic equation, basic information given is uh, that the gross area, again this we, the gross area we can take from the IS808. So if you look up ISMC 175 uh, then we will see that the gross area comes out to that and then there are some other geometrical parameters. So H is 175, H is the total height uh, of the cross section, BF is 75, so BF is the width of the flange which is 75 and TF which is thickness of the flange okay, or this, this is TF. Tf is 10.2 millimeters and Tw is thickness of the web. The thickness of the web is Tw which is 6 millimeters. Okay, so this is the basic information which is given and the organization of the holes is also given. So in, in this case the pitch of each side the pitch is 50 mm and the end distance is 30 mm. Now if we consider, consider yielding of the gross section limit state that is uh, straightforward. So A gross will come directly from IS808 and we can see that the, the yielding gross section uh, limit state gives a tensile strength of around 565. Okay. Now uh, this is a candidate where some portion is outstanding, some portion is connected. right? So the for calculation of the net rupture strength we will have to consider uh, the shear lag effects. Right. So now the gross outstanding area that will be this area. Right. So this is the gross outstanding area. So, so we will have to leave out uh, Tf by 2 from bottom and Tf by 2 from the top. So it is basically 175 minus Tf by 2 times 2 which is uh, you know, one, 175 minus 10.2 directly and thickness of the web is 6 mm. Right. So, from here we get the gross unconnected area or gross outstanding area. Then we have to calculate the net connected area. Right. So, net connected area will be uh, of the flanges. So, net connected area will be you know this area uh, times 2 because both the flanges are identical. Right. So, for net connected area uh, this is how it is being calculated. So you can pause to try to understand if uh, there is a confusion, but it is actually just straightforward. Okay. Uh, so I think the only 
error in this is that instead of TW here, it should be TF, which is thickness of the flange, which is 10.2. Okay. So the net connected area comes out to 1101. So now we can calculate the limit state of rupture of critical section. Right. So it's just now a matter of putting in relevant values. So I'm not going into the details of this because we've already discussed how to calculate net critical section in case of uh, shear lag effects. Right. So the load in this case comes out to 549.1. Okay. Now next we have to consider the third limit state of failure which is block shear. Okay. So now block shear we will have to calculate first certain areas. Okay. So AVG will be, uh, you know, this is going to be the shear plane, right? And there will be two such shear planes because there are two legs which are connected of the channel section, right? So two times thickness of the flange times 200 plus 30, right? So 200 is from here to here, right? This is four times 50 which is 200 plus the edge distance of 30. So that is 200 plus 30. So AVG comes out to be that. And for AVN, we have to now reduce the area of the holes. So since there are five holes and the shear plane goes up to the center of the last hole from the edge, right? So the number of holes for which we have to deduct is 4.5. So four full holes and the last one is half hole. And the diameter is 18 mm. So we reduce 4.5 times 18 from the earlier one. So that gives us the net area in shear. Similarly for the gross area and tension, we have uh, again uh, two TF because there are two flanges times BF minus 40. So BF is this and minus 40 is the uh, distance because we are interested in this particular plane. Right? So that particular plane is BF minus 40. So the gross area and tension comes out like that. And for net area and tension, we have to further reduce half diameter of the hole because there is one line of holes in this case. right? So that half we reduce and that comes out to this. So from here we calculate uh, two estimates for the block shear failure and out of these two uh, the lower one will govern the block shear failure right so the block shear failure strength is 680 okay so in this case again uh, gross yielding is governing and the overall strength of the section is uh, 549 kilometer actually in this case the net rupture strength is governing not the gross yield strength so this is how the effects of block shear can be considered.